We are rapidly progressing with our video series, coming to the eighth video in which we will try to control a motor through the TNC microcontroller. For this video, all components will be used, except for the gyroscope. To easily grasp the concept, you will only use one electronic speed controller and one motor. The electronic speed controller, or ESC, is a microcontroller just like your TNC, but it serves only one purpose, adapting the voltage going to the motor in such a way that the motor changes its speed. The ESC does this by opening and closing the connection between the battery and the brushless motor, hence controlling the average voltage provided to the motor. You can control this average voltage through pulse width modulation. This means you only need to send a PWM signal from the TNC to the ESC in order to control the brushless motor. This is also the reason that each motor needs a separate ESC since you need to be able to control the speed for all motors separately. You will recycle the circuit that we already built in part 6 and use the same TNC receiver setup from part 7. The ESC needs to be connected to a TNC pin that is able to send a PWM signal. You will use pins 1 to 4 to control all four motors. For this example, connect the white signal cable of your ESC to pin one of the TNC. The 5 volt and ground cables need to be connected to the TNC 5 volt and ground pin. Notice that your ESC will transform the battery voltage to a constant voltage of around 5 volts. This means that your TNC will be powered directly by the battery. The schematic of the setup used in this video is shown on the screen. It begins to resemble the final electronic schematic that we are working towards and that will be necessary for full quadcopter control. Let's start from the circuit built in part 6. Disconnect the receiver from the ESC. Use three male to female jumper cables and connect the white signal cable and the red and black power cables to the PPM channel of the receiver. As already explained in part 7, you need to connect the white cable to TNC pin 14 and the red and black power cables to the 5 volt and ground pins. Now use three male to male jumper wires to connect the ESC to your TNC. Connect the white signal cable to TNC pin 1 and the red and black power cables once again to the 5 volt and ground pins. Now let's continue with the programming part. You will recycle a lot of code from the previous video. In the first 18 lines, just add a variable for the throttle. The future value for this variable lies between 1000 and 2000 microseconds. You will send the PWM signals from pin 1 of your TNC to the ESC of motor 1. Configuring pin 1 to send PWM signals can be done with the function analog write frequency, with the pin number and PWM frequency written between brackets. Remember that the PWM frequency used for most ESCs is equal to 250 Hz. By default, the resolution of PWM signals sent by the TNC is equal to 8 bits. This means that the signal ranges between 0 and 255, which would give a two course control. You can change the resolution to 12 bits using the line analog write resolution. For a frequency of 250 Hz or 4000 microseconds, 0 then corresponds with 0 microseconds and 4095 corresponds with 4000 microseconds. When you want to send the PWM signal in microseconds to the ESC, do not forget to multiply that value with 4095 divided by 4000 or 1.024. You want to avoid an uncontrolled motor start when, for example, the throttle stick was not in the lowest position after your last flight. Therefore, just before finishing the setup process, add some lines that make sure that if the values sent from the throttle channel or receiver value 2 are bigger than 1050 microseconds or lower than 1020 microseconds, the code will not continue and you will stay in an infinite loop. This means that in order for the code to continue, 
and the motor to start, you need to move the throttle stick around its lowest value. In the loop part, read the throttle signal sent from the receiver. The value of the throttle ranges from 1000 microseconds, meaning no throttle, to 2000 microseconds, meaning full throttle. You send this value to pin 1 and subsequently also the ESC and motor 1 through the analog write function. Remember to convert the throttle values in microseconds to their 12-bit equivalent by multiplying them with 1.024. Now connect the TNC to your computer. The receiver LED starts blinking. Turn on the radio transmitter. When the receiver LED stays illuminated, they are correctly binded. Now upload the code to your TNC. Connect the battery. In order to hear the starting beeps from your ESC, remember that you need to move the throttle around its lowest value for the code to continue. You are now ready to start the motor. Increase the throttle to test your electronic circuit. Congratulations! You succeeded in controlling your motors through your TNC microcontroller. In the next video, we will explore how you can manage the battery of your quadcopter. Do not forget to subscribe if you like this video series and see you later.